The Lonely Creative, true stories that will help you and your business grow. Written by Timo Kiuru. Chapter 1. Speak with feeling to be heard. Hialeah, United States, 2016. I catch an Uber ride to the city of Hialeah in Miami. I am on my way to a street dance event at the local Salvation Army. The driver says his name is Joseph. A bunch of dollar bills is taped on the dashboard together with a note. Tips are welcome. And a saint pendant dangles from the rearview mirror. Uber has a ban on tipping at the time, and the half-hour ride costs me about $5. Joseph tells me he works 12-hour days every day of the week, and he doesn't have to worry about how to spend his free time. It's about $1,500 a month to rent a one-bedroom place in Miami. Along the way, we pick up a woman who's just finished her shift at a movie theater. She gets off outside a shabby caravan park, and when Joseph notices the slight shock on my face, he blurts, Many of my customers live there. He tells me many of the people catching a ride have jobs that don't allow tipping, and the salary doesn't even cover rent. I had just heard that waiters in the swanky restaurants on Miami Beach earn up to $5,000 to $6,000 a month, mostly on tips. Nearly all the models living on the top floor of the skyscraper where I'm staying work as part-time waiters. This is the American dream, says Joseph ironically, as we drive through a string of poor neighborhoods. It feels surreal. I arrive at my destination and leap straight inside a circle of dancers, a cipher. The kids nod with approval as my solo ends. Street dance events have their unwritten rules. I've been dancing for over 15 years now, and I feel it in my body. I catch sight of two beautiful Latina women, mothers of some of the dancer kids. A local pastor, one of the event's organizers, jumps on stage. The start-with-a-joke tactic never fails, and he delivers a fine speech. His wife has been working at a hot dog stand, and at the end of his speech, the pastor grabs her under his arm. Suddenly, the Bolivian wife snatches the microphone. Her voice shakes, and she's seemingly insecure. She explains how she recently nearly died in a car accident. Now she's determined to tell people she loves them every single day. A thick veil of emotion falls on the audience of young street dancers, who all pause to listen for the first time. It's completely silent, as if time stands still. Then the DJ abruptly breaks the silence and puts on a record, the events jingle blasting from the speakers. Hialeah, yeah! I'm impressed. I admire how the pastor's wife had managed to captivate the group of dancers. Most of all, I'm taken aback by her view of life that overflows with love. On Sundays, I often head to outdoor events in downtown Miami, where locals gather to dance salsa, meet friends, and hang out. I've never seen anyone drunk, although I'm sure some of the older men sneak in a bottle here and there. It's where I celebrate 4th of July, when the crowd gathered to celebrate Independence Day is bigger than on a regular day, and the band on the outdoor stage has been instructed to favor rock and country over Latin music. The mainly Latin crowd is clearly waiting for the real party to get started. But it's easy to sense how honored and thankful, especially the older Latinos, are to be Americans now. As a hit from their former country sounds in the air, they dance full swing with great pride, with feeling. A few days later, I'm watching the Democratic National Convention on TV. It's a touching moment when a group of African-American mothers who have lost their sons at the hands of the police or in gang violence take to the stage. How can some people be so strong? The mothers who have lost their sons are standing in front of the entire nation, full of love, strength, and forgiveness. Although later, Hillary Clinton does get criticized for not inviting the widows of police officers killed in office. It seems that the next U.S. president in line will have to redefine the American dream, and who gets to dream about it. I continue to listen to what one of the best speakers of our time, Bill Clinton, has to say. As a speaker, he has a special ability to step into the shoes of different listeners, as if talking exactly to you. 
At times he lowers himself beneath the crowd. At times speaks as a visionary, radiating the grandeur and hope. A good speaker communicates clearly and considers the different needs of a diverse audience. Only strong feelings have the potential to change the listener's worldview. Speakers will be heard only if they spark emotion. Predictability is poison to a speech. You need to wake up the audience at times. Silence is the speaker's strongest tool. It's like an exclamation mark in a sentence. The speaker is responsible for getting the audience to listen. Speaking is one of the most important professional skills of a creative director. If you can't convince others, your team won't put in the effort to exceed itself time and again, and your client won't jump into the unknown. To become a better speaker, observe talented speakers and speak more often with more courage. Clarity, substance, and form are the hallmarks of a good speech. But emotion tops them all. We hope you've enjoyed this audio sample of The Lonely Creative, true stories that will help you and your business grow, written by Timo Kiiru. Head to timokiiru.com to find out more. That's T-I-M-O-K-I-U-R-U dot com.